We've got the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. It's raining. Let's go. Nice. Oh, sounds great. So what's powering this Alfa Romeo? What's under the hood, Andrea? A two liter turbocharged four cylinder with an eight speed automatic transmission, 280 horsepower and 306 pound feet of torque. Standard all wheel drive in Canada. In the US, rear wheel drive is available on the base trim. All other models, all wheel drive. The Stelvio will make a run to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.6 seconds, zero to 60 miles an hour in 5.5 seconds. You need to put in premium gas and you get around 654 kilometers or 406 miles to every fill. So this is one of the most powerful four-cylinder compact luxury crossovers. The most powerful is the GV70 with 300 horsepower and this one's very close to the Acura RDX. Mm -hmm. But Andrea, what do you get with this? This is a luxury product. What are the key standard features? The Stelvio comes standard with an 8.8-inch touchscreen with navigation, a 7-inch driver display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, heated front and second row seats, driver seat memory, heated steering wheel, a power driver and passenger seat, wireless charger, an 8-speaker audio system, and 18-inch wheels. You get some great standard driver assist technology in the Stelvio, including blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning, lane keep assist, traffic jam assist, highway assist, intelligent speed assist, and front and rear parking sensors. There are two features the Stelvio does not come with on any trim, a 360 camera and ventilated front seats. Can't oh, get yeah. enough of this. <laughs> it's a load of fun to drive. Yeah. You have a dial in the center that has DNA. A stands for advanced efficiency. That's boring. <laughs> then you have natural. That's the normal setting. And then D. What's of that, Andrea? Dynamic. But that's what, the one I've been driving it yeah, in. Yeah, it makes it a lot of fun. But yeah. what else can we put it in? You got to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. Make sure you like and subscribe but also follow on Instagram. For Andrea, it's motormouth underscore Andrea for a sneak peek what's going on in the channel. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below that like button. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code motormouth to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. I love the way this Stelvio handles. It's athletic, it's engaging, dynamic, entertaining. I mean, whoever owns this will have a lot of fun with it. So the best way to describe an Alfa Romeo is you have to drive one to get it. Yeah. I, we can tell you that it has fantastic handling. It's got an incredible suspension mm -hmm. that provides impressive feedback, a very quick steering ratio with the steering wheel, yeah. but it soaks up bumps unbelievably. This is based on the Julia platform. Yeah. Andrea and I both love driving that car every day. What a comfortable vehicle. This one sort of takes it up the next level. I really like the way this handles. Between the Porsche Macan and this, I gotta say they're my two favorites. I'm surprised how light the steering is in this. Even when you put it in dynamic mode, it never really gets a lot heavier. I do prefer heavier steering myself, but it's comfortable. If you put it in natural mode, like Zach said, it eats up the bumps. You'll find on a long drive on the highway, it's very comfortable. Yeah, so the steering ratio and you turn the wheel a little bit and boom, you go around a corner, it's uncanny. It's something that the Italians have done with the suspension that just makes this aggressive when you yeah. want it to be, but it's supremely comfortable for the times when you just want to cruise along. And you'll drive this mostly in rear wheel drive. Of course, it has standard all wheel drive in Canada, but if you need the extra traction or you're dealing with slippery sections, then the all wheel drive system will kick in for you. It's kind of the best of both worlds. You get this really sporty drive most of the time and fuel economy is a little bit better. Okay, so this is the Estrema version yeah. of the base four cylinder model, which is kind of a halfway measure between the base model Stelvio and the Quadrifoglio. That's the high performance V6 model yeah. that we absolutely love. It just sounded like rolling thunder. It was just absolutely amazing to drive, but that's a lot more money. This one is kind of a halfway measure and it looks the part, right? This one builds on the Veloce trim. Um, it comes with a limited slip rear differential and active suspension. 
I really like it, but it does get up there in price. Um, you could get the Veloce tram or you could get one of the lower trams. They all handle incredibly well. Now, these are big wheels and Alfa Romeo wheels look like no other brand nope. and they're I wish they were silver because you would see them better than the black on black on black on yeah. black that we have with this model. Well, that's the Estrema model. It's a limited edition model. It comes with 21 inch black wheels and black brake calipers. It's got the carbon fiber exterior trim, which I really like. You could go with another model. It comes standard with 18 inch wheels, but 19, 20 are also available along with these 21 inch. And then the brake calipers change as well. So the base trims come with silver brake calipers and then the Veloce trim, red brake calipers. And the one thing about Alpha is they all come standard with Brembo brakes. Yeah. So you're getting a high power braking system. So it's a unique looking vehicle. It, it's not the car you're going to see on every street. No. You know, if you live in a neighborhood where there's a lot of high-end cars, X3s everywhere, Q5s everywhere, Alfa Romeos, you don't see them very often. Yeah, and I think that's it. If you want something different on the road, this one is really unique and is going to stand out. But you're probably yelling at the screen right now. What about reliability? Yeah. You say you like it, and we do. It's a great driving vehicle. Yep. Well, we're going to get into that in our hot topic about halfway through the video. How about the inside, Andrew? What do you think of this? I think it's comfortable. We've got these sport leather seats on our tram. It has carbon fiber interior accents. There's red stitching throughout. The seats didn't get it. It actually has gray stitching. But overall, it feels like an upscale luxury vehicle. So in 2021, they did a mild update to the interior. They made the uh, center console here look better. They got rid of a lot of the hard plastic. This one has the carbon fiber. They added some nice leather. And the one thing I think is a standout on this product, Andrea, is the mm -hmm. sporty looking steering wheel yeah. with the start stop button on the steering wheel. Yeah. You feel like you're a race car driver, <laughs> uh, but it's pretty different, right? Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful. I, I'm a big fan of it. These paddle shifters, I've always said with the Stelvia, they're a little bit large. I find that they get in the way a little bit of the window wipers and the turning signal, but that's just the way it is. I guess you get used to it over time. One of the differences between this and pretty much every other brand, I'm trying to think of another brand that does it the same way Alpha yeah. does it, mm -hmm. is the paddle shifters don't move. No. They're not on the turning part of the steering wheel. With this, you always know where they are. They stay oh, yeah. in the same place the whole time. Oh yeah, and they're big enough. You'll know where they are for <laughs> sure. We recommend going up one from the base model to the TI trim. That's where you get that hands-free power tailgate, the dual panoramic sunroof, and also the 19-inch wheels. All trims come with the 8.8-inch .8 touchscreen, and there's a 7-inch driver display. There are rumors for next year that the Stelvio will get some upgrades, including a 12.3-inch digital driver display. Well, I think they're really a step behind in all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, you can see that small instrument cluster in the center with the analog gauges. I kind of like analog gauges, but mm -hmm. the market is saying, no, 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 yeah. we got to have digital. And the screen is really kind of hokey pokey in 2023. Yeah. It should be bigger. There's room for them to improve that. Uh, but you know what, it, this wouldn't stop me from buying this because no. the rest of the package is really well done. Yes. And just so you know, moving up one from the base model will cost you about $2,800 in Canada and around $3,600 in the US, so it's not a lot more money. So this is not a big crossover vehicle. No. Actually, the space in the back is pretty good. I'm going to show you that in a second. It's the second row is not that big. We're going to talk about it again in Questions Coffee and Cars. I would say it's a little bit bigger than the Macan, which is also one of the smallest, but you know what? It's really not that big. Front and rear legroom, it is one of the smallest compared to the competition and it's the same with overall cargo capacity and space behind the second row you will find other options that are more spacious so when you open the lift gate at the back it seems kind of long and i think that it's a very useful cargo area and underneath the floor will you look at that a proper spare well it's an inflatable spare tire but mm -hmm. the fact that it's not a tire repair kit yeah. we applaud that if you're in the alps in italy and you're stuck and there's no cell service at least that will get you down the road or in kamloops or Kentucky somewhere or kentucky yeah always having a spare tire is a great option these are words to live by andrea <laughs> all right let's get into your questions
Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. I'm a bit confused on whether the infotainment in this vehicle is a Uconnect system like other Stellantis vehicles or an in-house Alpha design. And do you like it? I've heard mixed things about it. Well, we did a Zoom kind of call during COVID yeah. with uh, one of the product planners in Italy. It was late for him. And he confirmed it is not Uconnect. It's nope. their own in-house system. And it's set up similar to the iDrive system. Mm -hmm. It could use Uconnect for <laughs> sure because it's a much better system. Um, it's laggy. It's not the best. I don't find it very fast. And also the graphics are very grainy. Mm -hmm. And can I just add the rear view camera? You could camera? do what you want, Andrea. <laughs> The rear view camera, it has been raining a ton in Vancouver and the raindrops get on the camera and it's, I can barely see the image. Yeah, that's why you need to move to Italy. Can it be a family ride for a small family? Mm -hmm. Depends how um, small of a family. I mean, do you have- If you're all five foot two, <laughs> no problem. I think the biggest problem with the Stelvia is just rear leg room. I think you could fit a car seat back there. You just would have to move the seats up a little bit, but it's tight. The problem is people think that car seats for little, the littlest newborns, um, you know, they use the most space because yeah. they're rear facing. Yeah. When you get kids into just the little booster seats, it's much better. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is similar to the Macan from Porsche. For sure. Uh, they will sell you a Cayenne. Unfortunately, in Alfa Romeo, they don't have anything bigger. And I'll just give you an example of the differences. 31.9 inches of rear leg room in the Stelvio. And something like the Audi is closer, the Q5, closer to maybe 38 inches of mm -hmm. rear legroom so it's quite a difference if you have um you know kids that are 10 to 12 years old like in that age group mm -hmm. they'd have no problem sitting back there no problem we put out a lot of content each week on the motor mouth youtube channel and it's super easy to find all you do is go to the youtube search bar and type in motor mouth the name of the channel then the brand you're looking for in this case it's alfa romeo and all our videos pop up it's that easy the Stelvio has not really been updated since it came out. Do you think it still holds up to the competition? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, it has some for shortcomings. Sure. I think Andrea with the infotainment yeah. screen is definitely one they could work on. But in terms of driving dynamics, oh. I don't think there's a vehicle that can touch this. Well, this turbocharged four cylinder is probably the best that I have ever experienced in a crossover. It is just so good. And even the automatic transmission shifts quickly. I'm really impressed with it. So yes, I think it does. If you, uh, like there's a lot of European car magazines that they'll pick for the best handling. Yeah. Uh, Alpha always at the very top. So if you're someone that likes a precise driving vehicle, but is still extremely comfortable, mm -hmm. uh, this is something you got to try because once you drive one of these, you go, oh. oh, I get it now. And interior wise, I definitely think it holds up against the competition. Lots of soft materials in here. I think it's really well done. Of course, we've got this top trim with the carbon fiber in here. Looks sharp. I think it's a bit of a part spin car from other Stellantis mm -hmm. um, Fiat products, but you know what? I like it. Me too. I like the Alfa Romeo. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? Quality and reliability. They were a real problem when this and the Julia launched with one reviewer noting that Alfa should come with a mechanic. Any better now? Beautiful sound, beautiful sound. If you want a really beautiful sound, you get the Quadrifoglio. That thing, oh. it's like a symphony, yeah. it's so good. Here, listen to this. That's a whole other level. All right, so quality, all of that. Andrea has the actual JD Power data. Then we're gonna mm -hmm. get into, that's the logical part. Then we're gonna get into the Italian passion. The 2022 JD Power Dependability Study unfortunately has Alfa Romeo at the bottom along with Land Rover and Volvo. So the absolute barometer is would we spend our own money yeah. to buy one of these? And I would say yes, I would lease one of these for three years yeah. and see how it goes. If I was somebody like a real estate agent where you're getting a new car every few years because you lease it, take a flyer and an Alpha. These things are a riot. I'm all about 
a vehicle and the way that it handles, drives. I like to have fun. So the Stelvio and the Macan both kind of cover that for me. Um, I like this because it's unique and there aren't a lot of them on the road. I would, I would do the same. I agree with Zach. I would lease. I would see how it goes. If everything was really good, I would consider buying it out or I would lease another one. We have viewers, followers who own the Stelvio and the Julia and they rave about rave it. Rave about so it. So sometimes when I hear from these people and we get the feedback, I think to myself, how are this? How is the reliability uh, an issue for the Stelvio and the Julia? But it is. If you want a sporty, compact crossover, luxury of course, what else can you buy? For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the BMW X3. It has a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with 248 horsepower and a starting price just over $55,000. The Audi Q5 with a two liter turbo four cylinder, 261 horsepower and a starting price of $51,000. The Mercedes Benz GLC has a turbocharged four cylinder with 255 horsepower and a starting price just over $51,500. There is a new GLC coming for 2023. The Genesis GV70 with a two and a half liter turbo four cylinder, 300 horsepower, and a starting price of fifty-seven and a half thousand dollars. So there are four compact luxury SUVs for you to consider. Can this thing tow? Is the fuel economy any good? It's not that good. No. And the price in our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. In the U.S., there is a rear-wheel drive model, and it starts at just over forty-six and a half thousand dollars. The base trim starts at just over $59,000 in Canada and just over $48,500 in the U.S. The Estrema trim we're driving starts at just under $70,500 Canadian and just over $59,500 in the U.S. Here's the fuel economy, 10.8 litres per 100 kilometre city, 8.3 on the highway. That's just 22 miles per gallon city, 28 miles per gallon highway. This Alpha can tow 3,000 pounds and the warranty is 4 years, 80,000 kilometres or 50,000 miles. In the United States, you get complimentary maintenance for 1 year or 10,000 miles. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we'd like to see improve. Well, what's not to like about the way this handles? Looks cool too. I'd like to see new tech in here. It really needs to be updated. I'd like them to improve their quality score so more people will drive these. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for something different in this luxury compact SUV segment, look no further than the Stelvio. The road less traveled, and it's a twisty road. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.